Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I have a very special book. This is called The Art of Lying from Urban Decay. This is a book that Sean was part of in 2010 and he found some extra copies and sent it my way. So it's in a four person anthology. Sean also wrote the intro inside front cover, or not inside front cover, but the uh, foreword here. The foreword is written under the name of Professor P.J. Handley and is kind of sets the stage for what this book is about with like people trying to basically it, my take from it was that, you know, the old gods are dead and but we're we're still kind of rummaging over the gods. So that sets the idea for the book a little bit uh, just legends, myths, gods, things like that. The first piece is Bloody Mary by Aaron Wright, and it's pretty cool, pretty well illustrated. I like the jump back and forth between the color stuff and the black and white art in here. And it's just two kids. The brother is telling the sister about Bloody Mary. Uh, they grew up in what seems like a pretty religious house, so the dad's like not having any of that. And uh, yeah, you can see this is really well done, like, paintings all throughout and then the kids work each other up into a fit and you end with like uh, a scene I'm gonna skip over that I don't know if these are even available anymore maybe I should just show the whole thing um so you end with this utterly horrific yeah I'll just go ahead and show the whole thing because I'm I'm sure there's not a way to get hold of these uh this utterly horrific where he finds his dad crawling into Bloody Mary's like belly pouch so to totally, totally horrific story there. Then we get much of what we said wasn't anything at all. And this is Sean's piece. It's a monologue, Sean Robinson. You start with these photographs that it looks like Sean's taking of a model. There's a little note here with a, like an ink stain. It looks like an ink jar stain on it. Then Sean goes into the series of and also, by the way, uh, Muka, you see Muka right here. Um, you go into these series of like Alphonse Muka-esque layouts and compositions that Sean is doing. Uh, really, really lovely stuff going on here. This, this, is, uh, this reminds me of the character in Sean's book, Discards, that he's working on. Just how the hair and the face is done. Uh, and then couching it within these, these Muka designs. And then having these characters basically have a chat. The monologue seems to be the person who's posing like talking to the artist as the artist works out whatever they're doing. And there's a lot of like interesting stuff going on, which makes sense with Sean, like production stuff, where it's like this is half half finished here. You have the inks and then the pencils and then you have the fully inked and then you start getting into like a... Uh, base monochrome like underpainting layer and then you get a fully finished layer here so there's like this this two tracks going on in the story one it is what seems like the models talking uh, just about like someone they met that they think is cool and then at the top you've got like this artist process playing out so Sean's just really thinking about comics in a different way which is awesome uh, and like, you know, using this language of Mooka to communicate these things. And then doing these really, really amazing Mooka designs. I've always been too scared uh, to even try with Mooka because the, the type of designs he does just, I don't, my brain doesn't process how to make those kind of design decisions. So really cool piece. Fun to see something from Sean so long ago. And it's making me even more excited for uh, Sean to finally finish Discards. Then the next story is called The Chicken Herder Who Found Men by Luana Reader. Uh, but I can't really show anything from that because it's too lewd for YouTube. So we'll skip over that and go to the last piece in the book, which is A Circle Before We All Go Under by Carl Nelson. And a pretty cool like uh, sci-fi action look here. Adjusted the blacks to be like a dark blue, bluish color. Um, so I think that looks really cool. And then against all of the oranges, it's really nice looking. So a fun little sci-fi piece to end it. Then we get this awesome illustration of Sean here. And a great bio that I'm going to have to read. Sean Michael Robertson loves puppies, kitties, little children, and monstrous library book sales. 
When he's not writing bios about himself in the third person, he stays busy with drawing and playing music and drawing and contemplating the fates of the sparrows and then more drawing again, all the while maintaining a trim and fit figure with the aid of his secret food regimen, which can be yours for five easy installments of 1995. Uh, so we're going to have to get out of Sean maybe a series of videos about his strict food regimen. Now this is in 2010. He hopes to finish his debut graphic novel, Discard, sometime in the spring of 2012. That got abandoned, but now Sean is back at work on Discards all these years later. So hopefully we'll see that soon. He also plays in Seattle's own indie chamber rock band, Landlord's Daughter, which recently released their sophomore album, no one's looking. So that's something you can all dig up online. See if you can find a uh, issue, a copy of Landlord's Daughters. Apparently they had at least two albums. And eventually Sean will join everyone else in the future. But until then you can reach him at blah, blah, blah. Here's his Gmail. Comments, freelance illustration jobs, or carnal solicitations welcome. Um, so Sean, you have now joined us in the AI future uh, as a married man, I don't know if you're still taking carnal solicitations, but we at least want to know your uh, food regimen, sir. So, cool book. I'm glad Sean found this. I'm really happy to have a copy of it. And really fun to see some of Sean's early experimentations with the form in this. And the other artists in it were really cool as well. So, uh, super deep dive collector items. See if you can find any of these anywhere online.